Hey everyone, it's Melissa from Hymns and Home, and today we're going to be doing some cozy winter homemaking. I'm going to share a cozy home tip with you. We're also going to make some natural bird feeders to hang in your trees outside. I'm going to be packing up my Christmas decor finally and transitioning into more of a winter decor. I'll share with you the sewing project I've been working on. This was my first time doing this kind of sewing project, so I'll share the process and the results with you. We're also going to whip up a very easy but very tasty bacon spinach gouda quiche, which is a total comfort food for these cold winter months. It's not always just how you decorate your house during these months that makes it cozy. It's so many different factors. It is partly the decor, but it can also be the food that you make, the projects that you do, the activities. There's so much that goes into making your home cozy. The first thing we're gonna do is actually for the shower of all places. For me, during the winter, nothing beats a warm shower. It's kind of my happy place. Um, it's kind of the only place I can go that's really quiet, usually. <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is hang some eucalyptus in the shower. There are a couple reasons I like to hang eucalyptus in the shower. One is it creates an aromatherapy effect. So the steam from the shower actually releases the oils in the eucalyptus and it just creates a really soothing, um, kind of invigorating at the same time effect. It's just really nice for the cold months. It can also help with cold symptoms. So if you've got a cold or just a stuffy nose, it can help with that. I will say if you have any sort of medical problems or lung problems, breathing problems, anything like that, you'll want to ask your doctor before doing this because this isn't right for everybody. Definitely check that out first. I'm not a medical professional, so you should talk to your own medical professional. Also, just be aware if you have children or pets, the leaves on these um, cannot be eaten because the oil in eucalyptus can actually cause seizures if you eat it. So keep this away from children, keep it away from pets. If you have little kids, I don't advise putting this in their bathroom, in their bathtub. Um, or anywhere that your pet could eat it either. But for generally for most people, this is a very nice, relaxing thing to do in your shower. I have two different kinds of eucalyptus. I got these both from Trader Joe's this morning. Uh, the baby and I ran by there after dropping the kids off to school. And all we're gonna do is tie this up with some kitchen twine and then hang it from the shower head. So for this, I just use regular cotton kitchen twine. So I'm just gonna cut some twine off. So you can use either kind of eucalyptus, the flat leaf or, I actually don't know what the other one's called. I know they're, they're different kinds, but I don't know what the, what the difference is. I'm just gonna tie this up here. So I'm just gonna tie it in a knot around the base of the eucalyptus. I do a double knot. And then I like to wrap it around once or twice. And then I tie it in a knot again. And let's go hang it in the bathroom. All I did was tie it in a knot around the very top of the shower head up here where it meets the wall. You will want to try to hang it so that it's out of the direct flow of the water. It'll last longer that way. Mine usually lasts a week or two in the shower, but if it starts to look moldy, time to throw it out. If it looks really dried out or icky in any way, just throw it out. And one of these bunches from Trader Joe's is only like $3, and this was only half the bunch, so I can split it between two showers. It's just a really simple and expensive way to make your shower feel even more cozy and give yourself a little aromatherapy during the winter months. We kept our Christmas decor up until Epiphany, which we traditionally do. And I finally got all the Christmas decor packed away. We took down our Christmas tree, stockings, all that kind of stuff. 
Most of the kitchen decor stayed the same because I intentionally made it more neutral winter decor so that I wouldn't cause myself more stress when it came time to take down all the Christmas stuff. I did take down the wreaths over above the oven though. Even though I think they're neutral enough that I could have kept them up, they had been up since before Thanksgiving. So I wanted to keep that window pretty short so that it feels more special when I do have them up. Changed out my gingerbread baking sign to my normal little painting. And when I say painting, it's actually just a little print on cardboard that I found at the thrift store. So it's not like some priceless painting I have above the stove. The rosemary topiary next to the window definitely stayed. I am planning to keep that up indefinitely. The natural bird feeders are a really fun project to do with kids, especially. Uh, the kids and I did these the other day. It's really simple. We just collected pine cones from my parents' yard a while back, and then we made our own homemade peanut butter. And the reason I did this was because so many peanut butters at the store have added salt, sugar, oils, things that the birds really don't need. The natural peanut butters that are 100% peanuts at the store can be kind of pricey. And so I just bought a big thing of unsalted peanuts and ground it up in the food processor for a few minutes until it was creamy. And we had homemade peanut butter. I took some natural cotton kitchen twine, and which is biodegradable, and tied it around the top of the pine cone. We just spread the homemade peanut butter all over the pine cone. Then for our mixture of bird food, if you will, to roll it in, we, I added some more of the peanuts to the food processor and just lightly chopped them up so that they were in smaller pieces. Then we took those and mixed it with some raisins and some sunflower seeds. And then we just rolled our peanut butter pine cones in that mixture and hung them up in a tree in the front yard. It's just a fun little project to do and it's fun to feed the birds. I like to hang them somewhere that I can see the birds from the window. We have a cardinal in particular that lives in our backyard. He's just so pretty. We love watching him out the window. Something about, something about quiche is just comfort food to me. I guess just because it's warm and it's rich and kind of like a pie. I guess pie is kind of comfort food. I'm not usually a pie person. I prefer cake, but in this case, I like a savory pie. This recipe is so simple to make. I've linked it below if you'd like a printable version of it. My assistant here would like to tell you about the quiche. You can use whatever pie crust you want. I just used a really simple recipe that you can find in the link below. It's actually my husband's grandmother's recipe. And for the quiche, basically you just whisk together a bunch of eggs, some milk or some half and half, salt and pepper, and then you stir in the stuff that makes it really, really good. I fried up some bacon and then crumbled it into the mixture along with some grated Gouda cheese and then some frozen spinach, some frozen spinach that I had thawed and then squeezed most of the water out of. I stirred all that together, poured it into the prepared crust, and then you just bake it until it's nice and firmed up and the crust is golden. It is so tasty.
dipping my quiche in ketchup when I ate it, and I will ah. confess that I still do that. So it tastes great by itself, but if you're ever looking for something to dip your quiche in, I love it in ketchup. Maybe that's weird. You can tell me if you do that too. I totally don't think that quiche is only for breakfast either. We have it for dinner. We have it for dinner, we have it for lunch, we have it anytime we feel like having quiche. I always just serve it with a side of applesauce or some fruit, something like that, and call it good. It's a really simple meal. When I was little, my mom tried to teach me how to sew. Thank you, mom, for your efforts. Some of it did stick, just like with cooking, but at the time, I didn't have the patience for it. I wanted results right away, and when I was, when it wasn't working out, I got frustrated and I wanted to give up. My mom was always very good at sewing. She made all the curtains in our house. She made doll clothes for my American Girl dolls. I remember a stuffed rabbit that she made me for Easter and a stuffed dinosaur she made for my brother. Just lots of stuff. She was very good at it. So she tried to teach me how to sew. I distinctly remember trying to make a skirt. You remember that wrap skirt, mom, when I was like seven? And we never finished. Like I just lost all patience for it. Now over the years, I did try a few other projects. I got one of those patterns that you cut out that's already printed on the fabric and then you sew it together. And it was a teddy bear. That poor bear had his head taken off and sewn on so many times. I couldn't figure out how to sew with right sides together, but also be able to turn it out. I think I was like 10 maybe. But anyway, he ended up with this horrible scarring around his neck because I had to take his head off so many times that I finally just had to tie a ribbon around his neck to hide it. So that was kind of my history with sewing. And then once I moved into my own house, I started to have a renewed interest in learning to sew. Thus far, I had made several sets of curtains for our house. I made curtains for my husband's workshop. I made the nursery curtains. They have the tie tabs at the top. I made the tie up curtains in the kitchen. I also made a variety of other pro little projects like pillows and little, just little things here and there, but I had never made a garment, something for me to actually wear. So I decided that I wanted to make a skirt. This kind of stemmed from a trip to Joanne Fabric when they had their material on major clearance right after Christmas, I think. And I saw this fabric that I really loved and I thought that would make a beautiful skirt. I also saw fabric that I would love to make a dress out of two different fabrics to make dresses, but I thought I should definitely start with the skirt before I attempt dresses. So for the last two weeks probably, I have been working on this winter skirt. I finally finished it last night, and if you've been following along on Instagram in my stories, you've probably seen little bits here and there where I'm sharing the process and what I'm learning. Now, it is far from perfect. In fact, I made a major, major mistake and I'm kicking myself because this mistake should have been prevented from the very beginning. If I knew what I was doing, I sh this should have been one of the very first things I thought of before I started. And that is, first of all, I chose a plaid fabric, which is probably the hardest fabric pattern I could have chosen <laughs> because apparently getting plaid to line up is not an easy task. So I should have been thinking about lining up the plaid before I even cut my fabric. But that never occurred to me and somehow through the entire process this never occurred to me that it wasn't going to line up in the front even though I was like trying it on and draping it and you know it just it never clicked that the pa the plaid wasn't going to line up until i was sewing on the buttons at the end and i realized oh no <laughs> it's not lining up so this is a skirt that is supposed to have buttons down the front i asked my husband and my mom and a friend all what they thought and i got varying degrees of 
eh, it looks it looks okay you could wear it to it looks terrible only wear it around the house <laughs> um so i'm kind of uh cheating here and i've decided that on this skirt the buttons are a feature down the side of the skirt <laughs> because i figure with the full drape of the skirt you're not going to notice as much on the side and i think it actually works but all in all, it actually went pretty well for my first clothing project. One, it actually fits me, so that's an accomplishment. Two, I managed to get the seams all pretty nice and um, the interfacing for the waistband came out okay. Most of my buttonholes are okay. I had one or two that were a little funky. As my mother reminded me, this was a learning project. I'm still very much a beginner at sewing. I'm learning and I'm actually really proud of everything I learned. I had never sewed buttonholes before. I had never made those. So I learned how to use the buttonhole feature on my sewing machine and I practiced and practiced before I did it to my skirt. I learned how to use interfacing. I used the fusible kind. I had never done that before. I pre-washed my fabric. I pressed it before I cut my pieces and I pressed my seams the entire way through the process trying to keep everything sharp. I do plan to attempt another skirt. Uh, this time I'm going to choose a solid fabric or a pattern that doesn't really need to be lined up. Eventually I hope to make a dress, but I don't think I'm quite there yet. Along with the cozy winter homemaking, I've also been working on a living room refresh, except I'm gonna save that for its own video because there's a lot more to it. Be sure to stay tuned for that living room refresh. I am loving how it's going so far. I would love to hear what kind of projects you're working on this winter. If you're working on sewing or knitting or doing a room makeover. So drop your comments below and let me know what you're working on. And I really appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more cottage living. I'll see you next time.